I'm here at the McWayne Center in the world of water with my friend Norman. And we've got, we have some super cool sea creatures here. You can see the fish swimming behind us and they have tails. And animals have tails, right? Right. All animals have tails? Now that isn't necessarily true. There are lots of animals in the world that don't have tails or any traits that we might normally associate with animals. Well, what kind of animals? What are you talking about? Well, since you mentioned sea critters like our fish back here, we actually have some other sea critters that they don't have tails, but they also don't have things like eyes, which we normally think is a necessity for something that's alive. So an example would be my friend here, the African red tip sea star. So wow. she is a type of sea star, and they do not have any eyes. They don't even have a brain. But even though she doesn't look like she's alive, she does have tiny two feet on her bottom. And if you look closely enough, you might actually be able to see those little tube feet wiggling around. But not only does she have those two feet on the bottom, you'll notice that over time, she starts to kind of fold down a little bit, trying to look for something to grab onto. So that's one way that you can tell that she is alive and not just some kind of shell or decoration in a fish tank. Wow, that's really cool. Uh, are there any other sea creatures that don't look like normal animals? So alongside the sea star, we do have another member of a very similar species. So she is an echinoderm. Just a fancy way of saying spiky skin. And one of her companion animals is this sea urchin, also an echinoderm. Spiky skin makes a lot more sense here because you can see that she is covered in hundreds of little tiny spikes all over her body that at first look really sharp and dangerous, but they're actually pretty soft and moving around very slowly. So she kind of looks like a moving pin cushion. Yeah. And that's where she gets her name, the pin cushion urchin. I can see them moving around. So how does she eat? Does she have a mouth? So she does. On the bottom of their bodies is a small mouth, and on the urchin, they're able to chew on things like algae, kelp, and small enough animals that they can get in there. So they are omnivores. They eat plants and meat. Me but, too. Me too. <laughs> yes, most humans are omnivores. Now our sea star, she's a little different. She is a carnivore, which means she only eats meat. Whoa. And she eats by pushing her stomach outside of her body, where she then wraps it around her food, and that's how she eats before pulling the stomach back in. Whoa, have you guys ever tried that before? I wouldn't recommend it. Ugh. Wow, well you guys have lots and lots of cool sea creatures here in the McWayne Center, and also lots of other cool exhibits. Oh yeah. So I actually have a really great story about sea creatures, so thank you so much, Norman, and let's go back to the library and have a story, okay? Sounds good to me. All right, see you guys there. The story I have for you today comes from this lovely book, Shine, by Patrick McDonald with the pictures by Naoko Stoop. This story is about a sea star. This sea star. You see, this sea star used to float near the top of the ocean where she lived, and she would look up at the night sky, and she would wish upon a falling star. I wish, I wish I could be a star in the sky. Then I could truly shine. But I'm stuck down here in the ocean. Oh, it's so drab in the ocean. Up in the night sky, they have colorful, whirling planets, she said, as she floated past her colorful swimming friends, the octopus, the squid, and the jellyfish. Oh, the possibilities are endless, she said, as she floated past the endless clouds of shrimp. It's so exciting up in the sky, she cried, as she floated past the exciting shark. Everything up there is so unique and wonderful, she said to her unique and wonderful ocean friends. You wouldn't believe how magnificent it is in the night sky, she said, as she floated past the magnificent whale. Her friends tried to cheer her up, 
but she just kept sinking and sinking. I'll never be able to shine in the ocean. She sank down, down, down into the darkest, deepest parts of the ocean. She floated down, down into the deepest, blackest depths of the ocean. She floated down in the darkness until she saw a light, something shining. It was Mrs. Anglerfish. <gasps> Mrs. Anglerfish, how do you do that? How do you shine in such a dark, deep space? I, I don't think I can shine unless I'm in the sky. How do you do it? Oh, well, dearie, of course I can tell you how I shine. I shine because I'm happy, and I'm happy because I'm here where I belong, among all my friends. That's what really matters. It doesn't matter where you are. As long as you're with the people you love, your shine comes from your heart. <gasps> I think... I think I understand, the sea star cried. I think, I think maybe, maybe I can. Maybe I can. The sea star floated back up, up, past her magnificent, exciting, unique, wonderful, colorful friends and thought about all of the endless possibilities there in the ocean and she began to shine. The end. I hope you guys enjoyed that story and I hope you enjoyed our virtual visit to the McWayne Center. Thank you so much to our friend Norman for teaching us about sea creatures that don't maybe look like normal animals do. And thank you to everyone at the McWayne Center. Be sure to check out their exhibit, The World of Water, where you can meet all kinds of amazing sea creatures, some of whom have tails and some of whom don't. I hope that you have had a wonderful summer of tales and tales. Keep reading, summer's not over yet. Thanks for coming.